Snapstrike. I like to think of longtime video game publisher and developer Koei as like a restaurant that only serves one very specific kind of food. Would you like a burger or a grilled cheese sandwich or even a salad? Well, too bad. This is Koei. You're getting a heapin' helpin' of tactics, strategy, numbers, statistics, and very slowly paced gameplay. But just because the gameplay is very similar across pretty much every Koei game on Super Nintendo, and Sega Genesis for that matter, that doesn't mean it only comes in one flavor. For example, if you want the historical simulation flavor, there's plenty of that with Genghis Khan and Romance of the Three Kingdoms, just to name a couple. If you want that kind of game but with more of a business-oriented flavor, then there's the Aerobiz series, starting with regular old Aerobiz, originally made for PC systems like the PC-9801 and the FM Towns, before it was ported to the SNES and Sega Genesis in early 1993, and the cover art seems to indicate that this game takes place on some kind of warped earth, where Paris, London, Moscow, and Tokyo are all just right across the river over there. You start out choosing between two scenarios, the present or the future, and I should mention real quickly that this game is four-player compatible if you can find three other people to play this with. Next, you pick out your headquarters location, and this kind of works as the game's difficulty setting. If you're new, you'll want to pick a huge city with a ton of planes and lots of money, like London, Tokyo, New York, or LA. The smaller and more remote the city, like Honolulu or Lima, then you'll have fewer resources to draw from, which makes things a lot tougher to get going. Your goal is to get 22 different cities all over the world under your airline network while remaining profitable, and to start off, you'll do that by negotiating with other airports. Sure, other Koei games have generals and warlords, but in Aerobiz, you've got lobbyists, salesmen, and administrative assistants like NHL Commissioner Gary Bettman here. I'd like a ROM hack of this where I can get some other people to help out, like maybe the pilot wings guy, or a fighter pilot like Fox McCloud, he knows a few things about planes, but I really want to see the angry guy from SimCity 2000 yell at me about how my entire life is a mistake because I don't have enough funding to fix the roads. Anyway, you have to negotiate with other airports for slots for your planes, then once you do that, you open up a route, pick which planes you want to use for that route, buy more planes, and analyze the data that comes back from competing airlines so you can figure out how to better run your business, whether that's having cheaper flights, more flights, or flights to places that other airlines don't provide. There's four turns per year, and if you go four consecutive turns with a negative balance, it's game over. There's also a time limit, so to speak. If you go 32 years, or 128 turns, and you still haven't won, the game just says, too bad, so sad, you lose. What makes Aerobiz really interesting is that the gameplay takes place as real-world events unfold. Like, for example, when the Olympics are happening that year, that's gonna boost traffic big time all over the world, especially for the host city, so you gotta plan accordingly to take advantage of that. Cities can also run tourism campaigns and festivals, and you also have to deal with work stoppages and labor strikes. What's really fascinating is how war and political uprisings and revolutions can suddenly change the scope of what you're doing. I never thought I'd see the Cold War work as a game mechanic in a Super Nintendo game. If you play in the future scenario, Koei predicts Russia will join the European Union. Well, that did not happen. But still, the reason I kept going with this one was simply to see what country was going to declare independence so I could quickly run a route there. I gotta point out the music as well, just because it's so surprisingly upbeat and energetic. Yeah, this makes me ready to balance budgets and schedule meetings that could have been emails. But as usual with Koei, you're always going to be better off playing the later versions of their games, which leads us to... Aerobiz Supersonic. This one was ported in the middle of 1994 to the Super Nintendo and Sega Genesis after originally being made for DOS and Windows, and like a good sequel, this game just has a lot more of what the first game offered. I mean, just look at the cover. This time you've got three business types who are desperately trying to pay off their master's degrees after drowning in debt for decades, while John Stossel back there plays WWF WrestleFest. This time around you've got four scenarios to choose from, ranging from 1955 all the way to the distant year of 2020. As you might expect, Aerobiz Supersonic is more of the same from the first game. Just some hard-hitting business action, opening up inter-regional routes, building hubs, and buying planes. It's just a lot more organized in this game. For example, the world airline market is divided into seven different regions, which gives route patterns more of a wheel and spoke system. Like, you can't create a route straight from your headquarters to the middle of nowhere. You have to link up with other larger cities and work from there. 
You can also purchase businesses, run ad campaigns, work with hotels, shuttle services, and tourist attractions, and of course, hold board meetings. In case this is all confusing to you, you're in luck. In true Koei fashion, the manual provides us with a flowchart. You gotta love that. You know a game is dense as hell when the instruction manual has a friggin' index to look things up. But yeah, there's over 50 planes in this game, up from 20 in the previous game, and there's everything from the DC-9 to the Concorde. It makes me wonder if there was a modern game like this that blends the airport management side of things with something like Microsoft Flight Sim. That would actually be pretty cool. But anyway, world events are mostly the same as the first game, just with some extra detail added. It's the same idea, there's just more stuff to manage, like if there's a crash because your planes are old and overworked, then you gotta deal with repair and service, and you have to work with your customer base to repair your reputation. In addition to political upheavals, cities can also have natural disasters like earthquakes that wreck all their airport stuff, so you have to adjust on the fly with how to deal with that. Nintendo Power did a four-page breakdown about the right way to get started in this game, so if you're okay with looking at some bizarrely Americanized anime-styled characters, then here you go. I should also mention that as a bonus, Aerobiz Supersonic has a flag trivia game. Just press select on the save screen and you can test your knowledge. So yeah, this is yet another Koei game video on this channel where I say, hey, this game is great for what it is, but what it is is not for everyone. It's drier than drywall gameplay featuring meetings, account balances, negotiations, labor deals, airplane statistics, and ultimately you're just balancing supply and demand. Either you're into this kind of thing or you're not. But I will say Aerobiz and Aerobiz Supersonic are good gateways into management sims like this if you're not familiar with them. They're just as close to a game like SimCity as they are to games like Romance of the Three Kingdoms. They're slightly faster paced, and you might find the content to be more relatable than ancient Chinese and Japanese war history. I still think the Koei gold standard on Super Nintendo is Uncharted Waters New Horizons, but I think the Aerobiz games aren't far behind. And that's all for now. Thanks for watching, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.